Good morning. It's Saturday, and we're on our way to Ketchikan. Uh, it's about 10 o'clock right now. We should be in Ketchikan about 1 p.m. But between now and then, we're enjoying the scenery. And, uh, of course, we've got bingo coming up about 10.30 this morning. So Debbie and I will probably have to go play uh, another game. Debbie won last time, so, of course, now we're excited. Maybe we'll win again. Somebody else. Somebody? I'm going to go back to numbers. There you go. These are the numbers that I pulled. This is the Ketchikan Airport. Have you guys had a chance to see bears since you've been in Alaska? Yes. No. Some no, some yes. Well, they're not live, right? They're stuffed. They used to be alive. But if you want to check them out, they're a really cool specimen, they're not far from where we're at. It's just right behind us at the Tongas Trading Company. Downstairs is a 1,400-pound, 9-foot polar bear. It was taken in 1963. It's absolutely massive. And then upstairs is a Kodiak brown female. She's more impressive, I think, than the polar bear is. She's 750. She was taken in the month of May. So if they had waited till September, she'd have put on to the 150 pounds, give or take. But she's only from this seat here to that gentleman there in the red. So she's not real tall or long, but she's like this wide at the shoulders. Wow. Absolutely massive. Biceps not big around. Guaranteed you only say no to her one time. Um, <laughs> we gotta reach this little seat here. So let's get this thing going here right now here. Good morning slash afternoon. Welcome to port. Thank you for joining us today for our insert tour name here. In order for us to have a fun and safe day in port, we kindly ask you to not leave the tour at any time. That we stay together as a group today as we enjoy our experience. Please take note of your tour vehicle today and remain in the same vehicle for the duration of the tour. Distancing while we at all times by doing your best to stay six feet apart from your fellow passengers unless they are in your travel group. At the conclusion of the tour, we will head directly back to the ship. We also need to wear face coverings at certain times throughout our tour, so please follow all instructions we provide. And any local regulations that here in port regarding face coverings, as always, please remember to wash or sanitize your hands when opportunity allows, and kindly do so whenever requested by a team member. And finally, if anyone does begin to feel unwell during our tour today, please immediately put on your face covering, alert a member of staff, and maintain physical distance from your fellow passengers whilst we make arrangements to assist you. Please do remember that these guidelines are in place for everyone's well-being. Thank you for cooperation, and let's enjoy our day in port together. Oh, that's an awesome way of starting a tour. I gotta tell you, that was not written by a tour guide. <laughs> Boy, I'm gonna tell you that right now, all right? <laughs> all right, welcome to Gets again, all right? You can't, and, and it's not raining. So that's kind of weird. It will hopefully start raining any second now. Make sure you get the catch again blessing, okay? Oh, <laughs> it's, my brother, it's my brother from New Jersey. <laughs> I'm from Jersey, I know that one. I, I usually get my hand signed, but we're going to let that go today. <laughs> catch again is on an island. It's very hard to tell it's an island because it's too big. You can't see the edges of it, okay? The island's about 30 miles by 50 miles. Pretty big island. It's about the size of Rhode Island, and it has a name to match. Ravella Gagito. Ravella Gagito. How's that for a walk for her name, okay? A Spanish explorer. Of course, he was never here, so that's why we named the island after him. <laughs> There's a couple of rocks down Baja, California, also named Ravella Gagito, okay? Catch again itself occupies about 2% of the island. It's this sliver on this shore. It's like a fingernail, okay? And right behind us, the rest of the island is connected to a much larger thing called the Tongass National Forest. That is the largest undisturbed temperate rainforest in the world. 
okay? Rainforest, first of all, it has to have 150 inches of rain a year or more. Check. It also has to have solid vegetative cover of evergreen nature. Check again, okay? Amazon rainforest is evergreen, right? So is ours, different species, obviously. Actually, our species is pretty easy to know. It's really three of them cover it. It's Sitka spruce, hemlock, and uh, cedar. That's it. I had a brain fart right there. <laughs> so the salt water is about a quarter mile this way. All five species of salmon come up this creek to spawn, which is pretty amazing right now. I'm going to be honest with you. I think there's one sockeye. Sam the sockeye, they spot them, they go there, there's five. <laughs> Apparently it's a very low run of sockeye, but I'm claiming it, all right? I'm claiming it. Now, all five species, now some salmon don't like jumping up there for that fall, it's too much. And so, especially chum salmon, chum salmon don't like jumping. So we built this structure here on the left. Anybody know what that is? Salmon ladder, right? A little flooded. We get 13 feet of rain a year. How are you going to keep grass on that, right? You slide in the third base, you go all the way out to the parking strip, okay? These kids plant a mixture of gravel and ground up seashells. This is salt water. This is the creek. They used to bring all the mud and sand down here, right? This flat land is very hard to come by and catch again. Notice the big pillars underneath the houses? Really? That's kind of cool, right? So you already have a postcard. Look. From catching it in your passport. Okay. They redid the passport back in 2007, and they really wanted to make it like American imagery, and so we made the cut right there. Okay. Pretty slick, right? Yeah. You didn't even know you had that. <laughs> right there. Yeah. So just go out that way. All right. Here we go, guys. All right, we all knew we were going to the water today, right? Right hand side, uh, the orca song here, this is a purse saner. Purse saner, I know it's a purse saner. That's a big boom, hydraulic winch on the top bottom of it, you'll see it in a minute. That work skip right there, sitting on the deck. Also notice that work skip, the propeller is in a cage. Okay, and I, I promise to go back and finish this out, all right? Uh, left hand side, the hide and cheat. That is not a fishing boat at the moment, that is a tender. I can tell that because it has a sorting table on the right and the left hand side is an aluminum tank on an angle. And it's a fish vacuum. Oh. Alright, so let's go back and fill in, fill in the gap they left, okay? Some of you look confused already. <laughs> That's what I'm here for, okay? So a purse sander puts that work skip in the water, grabs the end of that net, takes that net out and around the salmon, big circle, brings it back to the mothership. It you're 30 miles out of town, you're having a kick-ass day, you fill your boat with salmon, and you want to stay on site and keep fishing. So you contact the tender, the tender comes out and takes those fish from your boat, puts it on the tender, and then the tender brings it back to the cannery. I'm going to show you the cannery here in about 10 minutes. Right now. So you stay on site fishing, okay? And to transfer those fish in a timely manner, because there's thousands of them, we use a fish pump, a fish vacuum called a transvac which blows my mind that you can suck a salmon through a tube like that. That's a gill netter. That's a nice timing. See that spool in the back right there? Yeah. That's another kind of fishing boat. They never drive by me when I'm out here. I love that. It's like, it was like perfect timing. So a gill netter fishes in a completely different way. That net has floats at the top and weights at the bottom. It's like a quarter, quarter mile long net with a float on the end. Comes back to the mothership and they drift, right? And those nets are made out of monofilament. They are, they, they're clear underwater. They're invisible underwater to a fish. So you're a salmon, you're swimming along. This means you're a salmon, by the way. You stick your nose in the net, and then you freak out and you swim forward because salmon can't swim backwards. The net, the diamond net, stretches, goes over their head, and catches on their gill plate right there. It's a gill net. Okay, and then those fishermen pull that net up and pull the salmon out of the net. That's how they tend that net, all right? Look at that. Left hand side, the Bonnelly right here, this is a trawler. I know it's a trawler because there's two big outriggers that are straight up right now. And when they're fishing, those are deployed like this, or at an angle, exactly. Um, and yep, that guy's blocking my view, but underneath that little roof right there, see the, see the little pulleys? Okay, so a trawler puts out individual lines. Think like 12 different downriggers at the same time. So a fish gets caught on one line, 
that line wiggles, the fisherman throws one lever, that fish comes up, they unhook it, they bleed it, they put it in the hole, they cover it in saltwater ice. So these salmon are caught one at a time. Let's go. All right, here we go. Duck is going to hit landing speed. I want you all to assume the crash position. <laughs> he has to get his rear wheels on the ramp. So this thing has one engine and two transmissions. He's on prop right now. He's going to get his rear wheels up on the ramp. To hesitate, neutral, wheels out. Pretty slick, huh? <laughs> Don't do that too much, he gets a real big eagle, okay? <laughs> on your right hand side, this eagle, this is one of our totems. This is the namesake of our town. The Indian name for this town is called Kitchikin. Kitchikin. But of course, white guys couldn't say that, so we ended up with Kitchikin. <laughs> Starting to rain. We finished our tour. Finished our shopping. Now we're heading back to the ship. So I can be swayed. You? Um, you know, I love cooked and stuff. Vidalia onion, onion, onion tart. Yeah. Onion from California. Yep. Oh. And Debbie. Speaking of onions, got the onion too. And Debbie and I both got the lobster tail with baked potato. See, it's the same. All right, I have the baked Alaska, or certainly a slice of it. And what did you, oh, Debbie got the pineapple. Mm -hmm. Pineapple. This is Oliver's drink. It's Angelica and raspberry liqueur. And Angelica, yeah. Or they may say cream. He's pretty cute, a little monkey. Good morning. Well, it's Sunday and it's our day at sea. Debbie's not very hungry, so I think I'm going to go to the restaurant and have breakfast. Then we'll see what the day brings. Well, I've started off with a fruit cup and some orange juice. I've ordered uh, an omelette. It's got mushrooms and tomatoes and I got a side of bacon. So nothing too exciting but hit the spot. Okay and the good one is right now we have enough payouts and you know people to make our game. Yeah, <laughs> So 
check everybody around. Thank you so much and see you later. See you around. Taking a video though, right? I am. I wish. Yeah. This is the coconut shrimp for the appetizer in a sweet chili sauce. And we got the same. Here's my turkey dinner. See that little piece of sage on top? Isn't that pretty? And cranberry. and cranberry sauce and uh, sweet potatoes, corn, broccoli. And look at that prime rib. And gale smile. <laughs> so this is the chocolate brownie. Chocolate brownie, is that what you said? Huh? A chocolate brownie? Yeah. Fudge. Uh, no. With caramel sauce. Oh, yeah. Suddenly, this stuff's not so funny anymore, is it? <laughs> <laughs> this guy was hilarious. I think he was from New York. He's looking at the bill. He's like, excuse me. Yeah, did I break a freaking propeller? <laughs> <laughs> what are these lottery numbers? I ain't paying this. <laughs> Look at it right there. It says extortion. <laughs> That's excursion, sir. <laughs> what? <laughs> I didn't drink no excursions. What kind of drink is that? They're expensive, these excursions. 99 bucks. What kind of drink is that? <laughs> It's Monday morning and we're back in Seattle. So we're not happy, but uh, the cruise must come to an end. We're gonna go find some breakfast and then we wait in our room until it's uh, our time to deboard the ship. There he is. There he is. Elvis. <laughs> we're going to miss you. Elvis Thank you for coming. All right. We had blueberry pancakes, but we're not going to dwell on that. And scrambled eggs and bacon. Mostly, we're just talking about our last morning of our trip. Dick 
Oh, hi. Bye. Bye. And back down to here. Monday. Where? Oh my goodness. <laughs>